tonight we do have a draw. So um, we'll go ahead and proceed. Uh, start out with my favorite part of the meeting. This is the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right, we do have a quorum. Uh, roll call. Yep, roll call, please. Rebus. Rebus. Here. Bell. Present. Graham. Here. Brickman. Here. <laughs> Here. Thank you. Weird. And moving right along, um, can we uh, have the first reading? All righty. Budget estimates, general fund, five fifty-five million five four thousand three hundred eighty-two. Non-reverting fund, four hundred fifty-six thousand three sixty-one. Reassessment fund, six hundred forty-seven thousand two hundred fifty-nine. Bond number two, one million thirty-six thousand thirty-four. Bond number three, six hundred seventy-three thousand three hundred fifty dollars. Bond number four, nine hundred six thousand twenty-five dollars. Bond number five, two point five million. Local income tax, nine million one hundred seventy-eight thousand four hundred seventy-six. Police pension fund, two hundred seventy-five thousand. Historical society fund, five thousand five hundred. Shelter fund, two hundred forty-eight thousand eighty-two dollars. Convention and visitors bureau, two million seven hundred sixty thousand one hundred fifty. Highway, four million six hundred five thousand eight hundred fifty-six. Local roads and streets, two million three hundred sixty-four thousand. Motor vehicle highway, eight hundred twenty-five thousand. Cumulative bridge, eight million seven hundred forty-six thousand one hundred fifty-five. Health fund, one million nine hundred sixty-six thousand one hundred nineteen. Civic center, seven hundred twelve thousand eight thirty-one. Continuing education fund, twenty-seven thousand five hundred. Emergency telephone system, two million nine hundred thirty-five thousand five hundred sixteen. Jail lease rental. Zero Parks Fund two hundred seventy six thousand three hundred forty eight Park Non Reverting Capital Fund two hundred twenty thousand Parking Garage Fund fifty Planning Commission one million nineteen thousand nine hundred nineteen Capital Improvement General Fund three point five million CCD two million seven hundred twenty one thousand two hundred ninety nine Special Airport General one million seven hundred six hundred seventy five thousand four hundred twelve Special Airport Cumulative Rates three hundred seventy two thousand four hundred eleven Special Solid Waste <coughs> Fund, two seven hundred or five hundred seventy-three thousand nine seventy-nine. Solid Waste District Debt Service Zero. Special Fire General, one hundred sixty-two thousand four hundred ninety-two. Special Cumulative Fire, one hundred three thousand four hundred ninety-four. County Corrections, one hundred and forty-one thousand nine hundred. County user fee for the prosecutor, three hundred ninety six thousand nine hundred sixty seven. Health maintenance fund, forty one thousand four hundred forty six. Foundation budget fund, five million nine hundred eighty five thousand six hundred twenty two. LEPC fund, nineteen thousand eight hundred. Recorder perpetuation, nine hundred twenty six thousand seven dollars. Adult probation supplemental and abuse, zero. GIS, one hundred seventy one thousand four hundred twenty seven. Prosecutor for trial diversion, one hundred sixty thousand four hundred thirty eight. Juvenile probation user fees, ninety three thousand six hundred eighty eight. Adult probation user fee, four hundred ninety five thousand one hundred thirty two. Surveyor perpetuation fund, two hundred thirty two thousand two hundred fifty nine. Firearms fund, one hundred fifty thousand eight hundred sixteen. Extradition fund, eleven thousand. Hazardous substance fund, forty four thousand eight hundred twenty five. Vehicle inspection fund, twenty seven thousand five hundred. Accident report fund eighty five thousand seven hundred thirty three. Domestic violence grant two hundred and fifty thousand eight hundred twenty. Cable TV franchise one million one hundred thirty three thousand. County four D incentive one hundred fifty two thousand five hundred eight. Stop grant eighty thousand one hundred eighty. Memorial Opera House five hundred ninety nine thousand two hundred fifty. Public safety data tech four hundred eighty thousand five hundred ninety eight. Jury nine thousand five hundred. Elected official. Twelve thousand one hundred ninety-four. Clerk four D one hundred one thousand three hundred twenty-four. 
prosecutor for the incident. Under name 2,900. Wildlife donation 26,703. Photo name 16,500. ARPA 31,048,606. Clerk perpetuation 277,967. State criminal aliases 4,290. Health trust account tobacco 72,375. Circuit court. Circuit Court Family Court, 25,862. Storm Name, 5,364,450. Inmate Process, 339,222. Trail Fund, 22,550. Juvenile Probation Administrative Fees, 19,611. Circuit Court DCS, 11,842. Animal Shelter Donation, 357,500. Riverbed, 469,963. Circuit Court Dave Young, 29,488. Addiction Response Grant, 13,200. Juvenile Detention Codes, 85,407. Forfeiture Pass Through Fund, 319,000. MOHIA IAC Grant, 10,483. Sheriff County User Fees, 61,398. Sex and Violent Offender Administration, 15,161. Hospital Sale Proceeds, 731,500. Drug Task Force, 191,460. Public Defender Supplemental, 90,474. Prosecutor for DUPCA, 11,000. Medical Care for Inmates, $11,410. SUIDSDY grant, 4950 DEA proceeds, 577500 Board of School Resource Officers, 225235 Countywide CAD 911 system, 293593 Bioterrorism Response Grant, 116549 Sheriff Overweight Vehicles, 11550 Highway level over vehicle, overweight vehicle, 55,000. Sheriff donations, 26,400. Sheriff Adult Community Corrections, 347,407. Court Community Corrections, 89,729. Adult Probation Community Corrections, 230,882. Health IIC Grant. 251,738. Videotape fees, 33,000. Health insurance, 14,382,500. Unsafe building fund, 302,500. Highway engineering fund, 176,000. Ditch fund, 760,000. Animal control fees, 76,212. Animal shelter fees, 120,243. Highway Community Crossings, 3 million. Court Interpreter Grant, 25,000. District Fund Task Force, 9,500. DASIA Guardian Grant, 66,000. Stormwater Bond Construction Fund, 2,725,000. Sheriff Overtime Fund, 155,016. COVID immunization vaccine support, 253,000. COVID ephthalmology lab, 99,000. COVID workforce co-op aggregate, 290,214. Opioid restricted fund, 202,275. Opioid unrestricted fund, 22,000. DHS grant bond suit, 25,000. Park native species education, 9,829. Health Department ARPA Pledge Grant, 19,978. Home Rule Fund 94, Cox Highway, 16,300. Home Rule Fund 95, Prosecutor Federal Forfeiture, 4,000. Home Rule Fund 96, Health Public Service, 3,840,140. Home Rule Fund 98, Cox Tech Grant. 400,000. Home Rule Fund 99, Monsanto Settlement, 1,500,000. Home Rule 
plus 100 in order to fatality in 12 hours of blood. First street. Thank you very much. Appreciate the, appreciate that. Do um, we have a motion for the first reading? Motion to approve. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Hey, Ryan, why is ARPA in there for $34 million? Right. Why is ARPA in Yeah. It was just the original number we were going to use to go for the next Right. Over. But it's all spent, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, we only have $11 million left, so. Which you have what? We um, only have $11 million left. $11 million. But that's accounted for, though, correct? The $11 million? Yeah, it's already. Yeah. It's, it's allocated. Already, it's already accounted for or set aside for everyone. So when we go to pass the final budget, the final budget, When, thank you, sir. Don't do it. Well. Don't go. <laughs> say it's uh, when you say it's accounted for, or is it allocated? Allocated. Okay. Very good. Shall we be spent? Right. Okay. Any other questions about the uh, reference to the first reading? Seeing none. It's going to be challenging. <laughs> it's going to be challenging. Yeah. Uh, the building, the estimate is fifty-five. $554,382. We have a motion and a second. Um, no further discussion. Roll call, please. Tim. Yes. Brown. Yes. Brickman. Yes. Bell. Yes. I don't remember us procedures. I don't remember us voting on first reading ever. No. It doesn't matter, but do we vote on first reading? Yeah. I, I, I just don't remember it, and really what the function of it is, but yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. So yes, though. We're not voting to approve it; just a vote that we heard it. Yeah, the number. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, motion carries. On um, the first reading, now we come to uh, <clears throat> Port County Auditor uh, presentation. We get him on Jeopardy now. Pages. <clears throat> yeah, Jim. Sorry. This one I could do over with. I just looked up. <laughs> Good. Thank you. I like that. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Get glass. Oh. Oh, thank you. How's everyone doing tonight? Um, so what you have in front of you now is the actual general fund budget and what has been passed this year in 2024 and what has been requested in 2025. Um, as you know, year after year, we can only grow the general fund by a certain growth quotient set by the state. For 2025, that is 4%. So when we take our total budget from 2024 of 47424263 you multiply that by 4%, and you come up with roughly $1.886 million that we could raise the general fund by. As you see in the 2025 requested, we have gone through, taken out all of the additional um, employees requested, any additional raises that have been requested. And what's left for you is what would be a balanced budget for 2025 if you so chose to go down that route. but. This is what a balanced budget for next year would look like. Um, you would see the differences in requests and where those, you'll see the notes on the side of exactly where those would come from. Um, most of them at this point are in the, what I would call the operating series, the 2000, 3000, 4000 series. Um, there are some 
uh, hourly and like uh, medical life insurance stuff raises as well. But other than that, most people in most departments simply just ask for stuff this next year. And so this is what a balanced budget would look like. And then on your second page, you would see exactly, I know it's a little small, but the That's small <laughs> <laughs> on the right hand side is all of the line items and what makes up the 1.886 million of requests so you'll see a bunch of reductions in there from certain line items for specifics you'll see that um election I'll, I'll send you a bigger one, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, but you'll see that like uh, uh, this year we had an election. Next year we don't have an election. So there's quite a few election line items that are quite lower than previous years. And so. Well, we'll go through all these. Yes, yep. Yeah. But this is. We, I this see is, where we got a lot of uh, changes due to employee moving from the funny fund to the general. Correct. And several line items. Yep. Well, and you got a big increase with the corner. Hundred thousand or ninety-seven thousand. Was that due to what we approved this year with the restructuring of their office? Remember, a small portion of that is, but a lot of that is for additional hourly and the lab fees that had gone up That's, for the year. Okay. Yep. Because I think they had 20000 in two different line items. Gotcha. But by changing their pay structure, we were supposed guys to voted. Save money. Yeah, it, it, it increased it. We're supposed to save money. So instead of them being paid when they go on call, they are being paid on call now so they can be sitting at home and they're still getting money so it's like a raise so that i just I have to make sure everyone knows that so those that voted for this you, you voted for the corner deputy corners to get raises everyone but you yeah absolutely <laughs> i knew that. i saw it coming <laughs> yeah and it was asked about talking about it and, and you, the body voted on it i don't but that's it is what it is you've also passed new employees for parks and other mm -hmm. departments this year as well so yeah not to it, seven thousand though but see it's hard we we vote on what we are told we were told that it was going to save money <laughs> right i i remember them saying it's going to help them i believe because i think the, the deputy told us that they're having a hard time scheduling i believe right wasn't that well, they were if down three employees. I also don't want to yeah. speak for speak Cindy at, you, at, at this point, but I, I remember it a little bit differently as well. Yeah. Uh, so just so I understand, the 4% growth is equals to what again? <coughs> 1.86? Yep. So that's our growth. And you'll see that under the budget difference or what would actually work for 2025. So the budget difference is eating up all of it. The entire growth. Yes. We should be able to see those numbers. Okay. Cool. And this looks like it would need all uh, the department heads because we've been we've been getting their requests other than adding people and the raises. Correct. So it's the cold hard facts, pretty much. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what we can realistically fit into a budget of next year. And I mean, again, we can always rework it different ways, but. This is a budget that would work and satisfy most of the asks. A lot of it looks like it, it 
I mean, the wish will thinking of moving employees back to the general fund. Is a, right. Is a lot of it. The increase in the cost, right? I mean, it, well, if you don't, you're going to kill the other funds that we put them in. That, that's where I was going. I mean, maybe we need to, you know, get a, um, a good accounting of those funds from, but what are we looking at? The biggest, there's four of them, five of them, that, four of them that are wanting to push a, a huge amount back into the general fund. So, you know, how healthy are those funds? You know, what's revenue, what's expenditure, how healthy are they? I mean, how long can we sustain keeping them in there, you know, if we slowly, I just, if we kept it status quo, three of them would be gone within a year and a half. Two of them would be gone, or the other two would be gone within five years. We ran that analysis. Can we get that info? Sure. Um, so you're saying then the recorder doesn't make as much money as they did before? So, correct. So they have to have some kind of account for that because people still got to record stuff and they're still going to be charged fees for it. So why would that number go down? Well, Based on what people record in a given year. I think those questions need to be done with the department that I'm so. the board of partners. If you want to discuss it specifically, you want to talk about it or I'll tell you. I was disappointed when last year you decided to use my people's round to make a big money available for other departments. But as far as anyone else is, I don't think we should be talking to the other departments. All we do is show I, uh, I tend to agree with Correct. you. Correct. That we should wait and discuss it with department heads. This is just a, a just an analysis information on what we're going to be looking at as we go through the the budget. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Appreciate it. Yeah. This has never been an easy process, you know. Right. Sylvia has been around for quite a few. You know, Mike, right? I mean. Mm -hmm. Brad, I think you're, you're the, the newest, but you were through it last year, right? The second one. It, it, this is, I don't know, number 13 or 14. It, it's never easy. It's a balancing act. Um, but I, I think, you know, it was, uh, I'll continue to say his name as often as I can, you know, Bob Topper. <laughs> um, you know, he really got everybody's attention years and years ago when we started on first reading. Um, you know, what is the number one asset in the county? The answer is really easy. It's our employees. Right. We should always start our conversation there. You know, um, what can we do for our existing employee base? Um, and the cost of living is not getting any cheaper. Um, everybody's assessed value in their homes continue to go up. You know, it seems like the same increment year after year. So people are paying more, you know, in, in taxes that way because the value is going up. So then... You know, cities and towns are increasing different fees, um, you know, which is more money out. And I know there's a discussion that's happening about, you know, an increase in income tax. That's more money out of people's pockets, um, whether they're paying them through more taxes or fees. And then, you know, if, if there's a real consideration of, of taxing people's paycheck more, that's less and less. And that's not really consider tax, you know, um, giving people's raise, people raises, our employees, you know, not giving them raises, but just everybody continuing to grab inside of their pockets. Um, so I think we need to continue it down the path, and I think we've done a really good job over the years of giving raises. You know, we did the rate, uh, the wage study, and I think it was right on time, and it, it cost us money, but it, I, I don't say it cost us money. We, we gave our employees raises. We tried to get them competitive out competitive with the market you know it, it was it was needed and but we continue year after year to give i think decent raises and I, I think it's important that we strive to go in that direction again this year it's, it's not easy and it's not going to be easy the next you know couple months are going to be difficult but that's why we're here but i, I just wanted to mention bob every chance i get but um <laughs> You know, but he was right when he said our number one asset are our employees. So that's where we should start the conversation. You know, <clears throat> what, what kind of raises can we give? And then to me, we work back from there. Uh, you know, what, what do we want to give? You know, with the increase in cost of everything, and you know, say, hey, we'll give you a 1% raise, but we're going to raise your taxes, you know, three times as much. It doesn't make sense. So 
I think to just kind of segue off of what uh, Councilman Rivas has uh, stated as far as our, our most important asset, our employees, and um, you know, with the raises, I think uh, from what I understand, all of our employees are at or at midpoint or above midpoint at this point and uh, at this time, and it's taking a lot of uh, you know a lot of work to get there and you know creativity. Uh, looking at the uh, just looking at the budget and looking at our growth and the needs of uh, our county, um, I think one thing I think everybody has a longevity packet. I'm just to kind of touch on a little bit and kind of throw it out there for the group um, that say uh, as we're exploring create creative ways to compensate our employees. Um, this is a maybe an option to uh, consider uh, as a council uh, with the general fund um, uh, at the point of being pretty much tapped out uh, with uh, uh, the needs of the county and, and um, you know we've been talking a lot about it over the last several months and, and some uh, different uh, different meetings a lot of us have attended meeting with the auditor I mean like like we said, I mean, it's cold hard facts are right here in front of us as to uh, what our growth is and where we are with uh, our budget. But with, in reference to longevity, today, <clears throat> the meeting with the auditor, um, again, I uh, want to thank uh, uh, Karen, you and your team, because they've been working with this as well, but uh, to uh, <coughs> come up with options but the longevity could possibly be an option one of the things that, that uh, i think we've been hearing from department heads other than uh, you know asking for uh, requesting you know raises or more people is retention of their employees once they hire them and what the financial investment is time investment on hiring new employees getting them trained and being able to them uh, having them be able to perform their duties and um, but once they you know uh, are here for a while they leave and retention was uh, I think something the common theme and in order to maybe address that challenge is to look at the longevity paid for employees as an option for 2025 um, where uh, we would be able to compensate and reward our employees that have been here for uh, years and reward their service and uh, hopefully an incentive to keep them here once we do hire them and train them and we're not losing people uh, as often um, but it's just another tool that we have available to us and from what I understand if we were to take a look at longevity pay for our employees would uh, be able to compensate uh, the majority of our employees uh, by increasing longevity this year and um, really kind of saving the general fund from what I understand the longevity would not come out of the general fund it would come out of the uh, I believe the riverboat fund if I'm not mistaken and that would free up some general fund money to um, uh, be able to uh, possibly look at uh, you know doing some road repair that is drastically overdue some stormwater issues uh, with individuals that are experiencing flooding within our county that are overdue uh, bridge work and um, some other things that uh, really need to be addressed that um, I think doing our due diligence we need you know to really look at those you know those projects as well but anyway I'm just kind of introducing this to the group it's something we've been talking about um, and um, with uh, possibility to look at longevity that again has not been increased for several years. Uh, I think 1994 was the last time that longevity was increased for employees, and and um, you know I think the auditor's office has really looked at uh, a percentage to increase it uh, somewhere between doubling it and tripling it for each employee that would give a lot of people a pretty substantial increase for for next year and um, 
we do have the packet here, and again, I'm just kind of sharing with the group introducing this uh, this option that is available to us, and and I think it, uh, I personally think it's something to really consider for this year under the circumstances until we can get our army around as a as a council, uh, do our due diligence with uh, really looking at the general fund and looking internally at some things that we might be able to do. There's been discussion of uh, we have some. We have some opportunity, possibly with uh, the foundation money, to increase the draw on the interest. And um, you know, I think that I'm not going to speak for everybody here, but I would I would think that we're on the same page where, you know, we do not want to tax the, you know, our way out of any you know financial situation. This should not fall entirely on the backs of taxpayers. That we as a group need to look and see what we can do first. And uh, again, be creative. You know, um, we've been doing things, I think, pretty much the same way for several years. And, uh, you know, I think things have worked, but we're at a different time now to, uh, again, as a group, just uh, look at what options we have internally and, uh, you know, be creative with our finances. And just kind of putting out there, this is possibly an option to look at. Um, to take some pressure off the general fund this year and also be able to compensate our employees. Uh, as Councilman Rivas said, who are, are, are our most important asset is taking care of our people. And this would also uh, maybe focus on the PR for uh, a little bit longer time. How would you like to? So you're saying that the longevity uh, pay that your handbook here is yeah. would be instead of yeah. they would be raising the longevity. That's, yeah, that's kind of just as a, a, an alternative, an option to consider uh, with the situation that we have in front of us with, um, again, uh, meet several needs within the county and taking some pressure off the general fund for uh, the upcoming year. And you're saying doubling? Or sometimes well, we've been talking about uh, somewhere between the doubling and tripling number, uh, which would give a pretty substantial increase to a lot oh, of people. Boy. And it would, uh, again, reward our people uh, and also contribute to, again, one of the challenges I think our department has, might be, not be the first thing they'd like, but it might address one of the challenges, at least help with retention of our employees once they're here. Uh, to give incentive to uh, stay with us and um, uh, you know stay employed, you know, with the county instead of leaving for other jobs. You know, my not only not only pay. Um, I've always been concerned about the benefits. You know, if you give somebody a two or three percent raise, I mean, they, you know, their health insurance goes up, their deductibles go up. I, you know, that. That hurts people too. That you know, I, mean, I know that's a commissioner, you know, issue. I'm sure they're working on it. I get, I get that. That's one of the things I always get concerned about is healthcare costs. As you see, we had to pull four and a half million dollars from uh, our investments to, to to cover that. To, and you know, every year it gets more, and more and more expensive. Yes. Um, you know, I always, you know, when I was on the school board, we had teachers and they weren't the highest paid, but you know. We always pride ourselves in good benefits, good retirement, and you know they were. You know we got we got their pay up too, but that's one of the things I think you, you hope to expect is have you know some decent health insurance. So hopefully we can get our arms around that too, as a as a county, and get that get that figured out. Well, I think that uh, you know we had several uh, very good presentations from our. our uh, them articulating their needs and uh, a lot of it, you know, um, besides operational needs was personnel. Um, you know, we've heard from, uh, you know, the Sheriff's Department and the juvenile probation, a lot of different parts on how, you know, um, you know, everybody would like to hire more people. And uh, I mean, that's, it goes without saying that's our biggest expense is people, hiring more people. Um, and, and at least until, again, we can get our arms around, you know, what our future plans are as a council. I know there's been discussions on uh, looking at, you know, public safety lit has come up, uh, general lit, you know, Councilman Vasquez, you know, you, 
talked about an option. I can't remember exactly, but certified share. Certified share option. But until as a group we can really sit down, if we were to do something like that, that would be a methodical plan. Uh, you know, public the public would be involved, and you know, that would be something I think be very transparent. Well, that's something that would take some time, and because that that's a policy that would be in place probably forever. And I, you know, I, I would not want to have to rush through anything like that when we're talking about any types of uh, that type of an option. So, again, it's, it's looking internally. What can we do, you know, as a governing body, you know, and exhaust all of our options before we look at, you know, uh, uh, asking the taxpayer to, uh, uh, you know, to pay more in any type of, you know, if it was a lit tax and. You know, if that, if that did happen, then I think we as a body could do that very, again, very wisely, very methodically, and work through it involving the public and um, uh, have a public discussion. And, you know, taxpayers, if a decision, they, they would know exactly where their money is going to go and how it's going to be spent. So, but this is a time, I think, again, uh, for us to look, at, look in the mirror and what are some things that we can do different uh, what are some options that we have as a governing body? Uh, again, the foundation interest, I, you know, that's, I think that's a very viable option that's available to us. And, and really, I think we, we're in a pretty good spot because we have kept our, our taxes low for several years because of the foundation, the way it was set up, and being able to draw interest from that foundation of supplemented general fund. Um, but just in, in, you know, to be transparent, we're at a point now where uh, our count is growing, uh, our needs uh, are changing, uh, the demands on our on our personnel uh, and our finances um, is not decreasing. So we're at a point now that you know we have to do our due diligence and do our job to uh, you know to uh, figure this out. And I think we have some options available to us. And again, kind of getting back to longevity pay, you know, kind of look at this. It might not, it's not going to be the first choice of our employees, but, it, you know, we always look for a win-win. And um, it's a way to compensate our people uh, and uh, also to um, take some pressure off the general fund this year. So that's kind of just kind of throwing it out there to the group to digest and and um, open to any, anybody's comments or thoughts on on something like this. What does the longevity pay now? What What is the cost for longevity right now? I know it's in this sheet. But 234. 234? I think that's what it is right there. Is that the last page? 234? Page yeah. I think that's what I got. Well, that's only half. And what was the, uh, you said you moved uh, money around and to put money into the uh, boat fund or the river boat? Yeah. 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 And how much was that? Oh, just so you didn't charge. So in river boat, there's, I think. What did you say? 450000 460000 It's $460,000. And does any of that go anywhere else? Uh, some of it goes to the boundary cover. That's what I thought. Yes. Okay. And that's probably where we're looking to get the money for this longevity. Okay. You think we have, I mean, we don't have to start paying longevity out of two funds, correct? Because... It wasn't. We couldn't. Af we couldn't afford to pay longevity out of there. I don't know where we're. Or are we amassing a surplus right now in Riverboat? No. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's 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 a conversation. I I think longevity at some point, we definitely need to increase it and reward those who stay here. But, you know, just speaking personally, I don't think. I'm not sure it's the answer today. I'm not sure, it, you know, 
you know, it leaves out anybody that, you know, recruitment wise, it re recruit, it's recruitment and retention. So, I mean, nobody <clears throat> been here for the, for two years, one, one or two years will get anything. That's right. And then people three, it, you know, I, I get the, you want to reward those people to stay longer, but I think on top of raises, not, not in, in lieu of, of raises. Um, so, and our general fund is not, yeah, the insurance costs definitely. We've got to continue to chase that. We've started it. It's, it's not enough. We're not keeping pace with it. The costs go up every year. Um, but the general fund is not in trouble. Um, we have a, a good balance. Um, and, and we still have balances um, in, in other funds also. You know, we're not, the sirens aren't going off. We're not in trouble. But also, the county's growing, and I think ultimately we want our growth in our cities and towns. You know, I don't, at least from my point of view, it um, doesn't mean we have to grow county government. So, I mean, it doesn't, because people want more employees doesn't mean we have to give them. I mean, this isn't a, if we got to grow government up here, we should run and hire more people. I mean, I'm pretty certain that the general public isn't out there cheering in the streets to grow government. So, but right. uh, I, I think, like I said, it's never easy and we'll find our way through it, but I, I don't think the alarms are going off. Um, and, you know, you mentioned bridges. Well, they increased the bridge rate like two years ago. That's probably the yep. healthiest fund that we have. So you mentioned that we need to, that that's taken care of. So the roads are kind of, yeah. I think the roads are, are about yeah. five or six million dollars of additional funding. We need two million dollars to <coughs> go creek for the next six, seven, eight years. Information technology. Uh, information technology. I mean, that, that's, this is after giving, you know, 3% is what, about a million and a half dollars for a 3% raise. So we're. Uh, that would be our growth right there. There's our growth right there. And then, like. Is that a motion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> Second. Well, I think that uh, this is kind of just kind of putting it out there to the group yeah. to digest right. it and right. to, uh, I guess I would ask uh, the auditor a time frame as a council when we would want to kind of say this is the direction we're going to go um, during this process so we would know <clears throat> moving forward. I Don't we usually keep like a running balance of what? That's what I was going to say. We keep a running balance and then at the end, if we, right. you know, we, 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 we know, we know. We, yeah, we have what, 1.5 yep. approximately, 1.586, I think. Right. And then by the time you do your assets, here's, you know, this is what we have left over. What can we do? And that's it. Okay. In regards to longevity, we always tell our employees we want them to stay. I think it would behoove us to show them we want them to stay. You know, granted, the guy one or two years doesn't get anything, but there is always the carrot with the stick, if you will, that they stay. They're going to get a little something extra to show that we're glad you're here, as opposed to going somewhere else. That's something else to think about, too. Well, I think, I think this longevity is uh, something that we would need to consider, whether it needs to be raised as much as uh, you maybe suggested is something to talk about but uh, I definitely think we need to do like you said all we can to uh, to make good decisions on our on our budget so we do not have to raise taxes and I think that we can do that we've done it and uh, I think that that's a that's a goal I would like to see us achieve. Well, I think that, uh, again, going <clears throat> and looking at our options, this could, could be a very viable option uh, and a win-win for at least this year and um, and then kind of see where we are after this budget cycle moving forward. Uh, and, um, I mean, we're, I think we're in a very good spot. You know, there are some, I think there are some jurisdictions where they would, if we're if you're looking at a lift tax, are almost tapped out. 
I mean, we have a lot of room. We have a lot of room to work with because we've kept it so low for so many years. Okay. And um, anyway, I think again, just sharing this with the group to di kind of digest it, and um, the uh, the amount of in between a doubling and tripling longevity. You know, speaking with the auditor's office would put us in, in pretty good shape financially and give a pretty substantial increase at the same time to our employees. So I think that's, that's where we came up with that, you know, that approximate figure uh, somewhere in between uh, the double and tripling of the longevity. Um, so uh, anyway, I just wanted to share this with the rest of the group and um, you know, we'll appreciate any feedback as we move forward with the budget session. Um, I don't know if there's any other any other discussion on this. No, we got our work cut out, but <laughs> that we always do. Like yeah. I, mean, I said it. I mean, government. There's always something to do and never enough money to do it. It's just it's what we're asked to do. To try to keep that balance. You know, of the taxpayers, and I'm sure they're not cheering out there to. Grow government and increase taxes. I highly doubt that's what they're doing. Is the council allowed to buy a uh, lottery ticket? I did. No, I mean for the council. <laughs> if you want to go to prison. I got my Megan in Illinois because it always seems like the blue states win. <laughs> California always wins. Yeah. So I went to Illinois to get mine. <laughs> Well, I appreciate, uh, again, I appreciate the work on the auditor. I appreciate uh, members, uh, um, fellow members of council that have taken, you know, have, we've been doing some meetings on Thursdays. I've learned a lot, Mike. I've been there, and uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's been an eye-opener. It's been an eye-opener. Kind of sees, kind of tells us exactly where we are. Um, you know, there's something I would real quick like to mention. I think that, and I think, Ryan, is it? Home rule fund 96, 3840000 Is that the health care budget, right? The new health care budget, SB4 budget? Yes, sir. So talking with JDC, they LPN nurse. Um, it, so we, you were there when they yeah. talked about the, the, the nurse. And right. for, the, for the life of me, I think this is something where, you know, it, it's small wins, but at least it's a win. Um, I, I Hopefully, JDC can get with the health health board and they can work. Some well, get funny you should say that. Tomorrow, uh, myself and Sylvia are meeting with the JDC and the health department tomorrow in room 102 to discuss this very thing. Now, with the LPN, the problem there is the liability. Who, who does it follow? Does it follow JDC or the health department? And that's going to hopefully be worked out tomorrow. But Sylvia and I have been on top of this for quite some time and we're going to try to see if we can hammer it and uh, save some money i mean the, the state's giving them money to I work mean, with this is where i kind of I, I honestly kind of get frustrated i see funds that come uh, an exorbitant amount of money quite and then quickly. and then you know i see jdc which by the way are our kids uh, yeah. but 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 it's in there's our kids and I'm sure they have health. It's it's a matter of how we word it, and that's exactly what we do. If you have good lawyers, you can get anything worded. Yeah. If you have MOUs, you can do. You can you can take money and help out JDC. They can take money and help out the sheriff. There's things that we can do in this county that the health department can do. SB4 can do for right for for these department heads, and particularly in my opinion, our kids that are in JDC. I'd rather see them go to kids than you know, right. 40 well, it, old, 50 old people have been in and out of jail. Well, we're on the same page with that. We are on the same page. In all honesty and truthfully, the health department has been very cooperative yes. in evaluating how they can assist. It has to be, like you said, worded a certain way for it to meet the grant requirements for right. them to spend the money. And uh, hopefully uh, something good will come out of this. As an example, Porter County Aging and Community Services, we were able to get money from the health department to subsidize some of the programs at, at Porter County Aging Community Services directly from our health department. So that that was a very good thing. All right, I agree. No, I agree with you on I think I think that good things will happen tomorrow. I will think positive. I will think positive. Very good. Okay, what uh, uh, any other discussion? What do I, are we getting a budget book breaks down, you know? Okay. Uh, attorney uh, Harper isn't here, so we can bypass the attorney's report, and uh, we're going to move into the public comments section. 
I'm going to cavil this to open it up. But before I do, I'd like to, uh, I got Mayor, Mayor Bontis here with us to, who can come first. But I'm going to open up the um, uh, public comment se section is now open. And Mayor, would like to uh, address the here. group. Sit down, get comfortable. Yeah. You can sit down, you can stand up, whatever you'd like to do. I feel like that was something, I don't know. I didn't come dressed prepared for this meeting. Uh, Were you going to speak? What's that? Were you going to speak? I think Red was. I wasn't sure if you just wanted me. No, I wanted to describe today when the, the phone call I, I, I received, I talked to you about your RDA appointment and um, the kind of, I would say, the letdown you had. It was definitely uh, a learning experience, and sometimes learning experiences are really tough. Um, if you don't mind a history lesson, I don't want to take up all time, but I really appreciate, you know, Red's invite to be here and to understand I didn't just come to tell you guys a sad story. Um, I came to see what we could do to make sure that things are addressed on the county side, maybe not for the same subject, but well, we'll get to that. So sometime early in uh, my term as mayor, which I'm only on my first year, I was contacted by someone from the Regional Development Authority, the RDA, um, and it was explained to me that um, the way that it was previously understood, we'll, we'll get to that, is um, the way that it works, of course, the Porter County Council has an appointment to the RDA, and I believe uh, you guys just recently picked a new person. But yeah, we're joint with the commissioners and, and the council. Thank you for explaining. I didn't mean to misrepresent that. At no, all. no, no. I just... Yeah. No, I just, I was aware there was a new one. Yep. And what I was told at the beginning of the year is that there's another appointment from Porter County where for four years there's a Valparaiso appointment, and then the next four years there's a Portage appointment, and it goes back and forth. So what I was instructed to do early on was by April 31st um, nominate three candidates for the RDA to the governor's office to vet, and then they would pick, you know, one of the three uh, candidates. So uh, I went through and I nominated my three candidates. Uh, I, I could tell you their names. It's no secret. Uh, Greg Lack, Frank Barkas, and Brent Wright. Um, each was qualified in their own way. There was a list of qualifications I was given that was necessary for someone to be a RDA board member. And I believe all three met them and turned them in by the deadline. Uh, come around May 19th. Uh, none of my three candidates have been contacted at all um, by the governor's office or by the RDA. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to skip. Oh, no. oh I was going to say, that's not a shocking part. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a... Oh, my goodness, man. She hurt his leg, so... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Right. So uh, none of them had been contacted yet, so you, you give things some time because it was explained that while they were in the process of vetting whoever was the previous appointment, um, and this is by no means a statement against that guy. He continues to <laughs> term until somebody else is picked. Uh, that was no problem for me because I felt like, you know, give it four years, maybe my guy, it takes some time to vet the next guy. It all kind of evens out. So I reached out around May 19th to say, uh, just checking in. Nobody's been contacted yet. And what I was told by the RDA is, oh, well, we'll see what we can do. We'll talk to the governor's office. Uh, then we got to August and none of my three people had been contacted at all by the governor's office or the RDA for vetting. And I reached out again, and so finally around later August, I started sending more consistent emails. Uh, nothing in my opinion rude, uh, feel free to look at them, you know, but all said and done, it was just, hey, checking to see how this vetting process is going, you know, what have you, and finally on August 20th, I was given a message that the Portage RDA appointment would be announced on August uh, 22nd, that was a Thursday, I remember right? And I said at the time, okay, are the three people that I nominated going to be contacted at all? And what was told to me was, honestly, Mayor, we don't know how the vetting process works. We just know that they said it would be Thursday, referring to August 22nd. Uh, then August 22nd came around, and we found out it would be delayed one more day. And so then finally on August 23rd, uh, Frank Barkas was announced as the governor's pick for the RDA to be Portage's board member. Um, so like I say, that was August 23rd. Yesterday, around 1.30, Frank Barkas was given a call and found out he is, uh, to my knowledge, the shortest serving member of the RDA in history. Uh, the governor rescinded the appointment and they've picked somebody else. Um, they've actually picked Mr. Campbell, who was, I believe, the county's previous appointment. Um, he's now the governor's appointment, not to represent Portage, but just Porter County in general. Um, Frank was extremely professional and I was certainly a little disheartened because he called me 
um, almost immediately after to tell me the news. I hadn't been contacted prior um, or that day from the RDA or the governor's office. Um, they had found a, they said that there had been a law change in 2022 that took away the rotation between Portage and Valpo and instead made it that the governor could appoint anybody in Porter County. And I explained as politely as I could that um, if that's the law, that's the law, but I really would have appreciated being told ahead of time, you know, as the Portage mayor. Um, and in particular, the fact that one of my candidates was appointed and then it was discovered by somebody that there had been a law change and then they rescinded it. Everybody seemed to agree from the RDA and the governor's office once I started getting a hold of people that, no, it was after the appointment they discovered that the law had changed. Um, all said and done, I guess there were a couple pieces here for me. Um, I expressed my um, belief that that was not the most professional way to handle it, that you just pull that away from a guy after he's been appointed, not just, you know, put in but also the way in which it came about that he found out and then I found out by him having to call me and then me having to call them. That's its all, all its all, whole thing that worked out. When Red and I were talking about it as a situation, I appreciate Red calling me. We went and took a look at the law that we didn't sit down yet, but I've had a person look at it. And what we came to right away is that very rarely in Indiana law does it say, and again, I can't stress, I'm not speaking here like with an attorney, like we know what the law says. I'm just letting you guys know what I believe concern we both have. Very rarely in Indiana law does it name specific cities or counties. Usually when a law is designed to apply to a particular place, they use some other factors such as like a combination of the population or if it's a city, is it a second class city, third class city. It seems like in Porter County, when a law is written for Porter County, it previously has been based on a population of a county between 150,000 and 170,000 people. And essentially what was presented to us as we understand it, and this is where we're trying to make sure we understand it, is once Porter County became a city of, or sorry, a county of over 170 people, the law can, you know, change, what have you. It's now a governor straight appointment county, and they somehow missed that until sometime before yesterday. Um, that's its own thing. We're working on that. But I guess simply put, Red brought to my attention that the county election board um, set up is based on that 150 to 170,000 population fact in the law, which if Porter County is now at about 174,000 people, we don't, I don't know the answer to the question. I'm not trying to stir any trouble. I, I appreciate Red bringing this to my attention. And I guess what I also wonder, and something I appreciate so much about this board is the way you guys just digest and talk about different things. I don't know if it's been thought about before, but for Porter County, to, I guess to put it simply, we found two laws, one that I guess has been repealed in 2022, but previously was based on this county being 150,000 people to 170. If the election board law was based on a county being 150 to 170, how many other laws pertaining to Porter County are based on this 150,000 number and 170,000 number, which sometime by the last census were now over? I'm not trying to cause any disarray. I don't think that the state government reacts to things that way, but just want to bring this to your attention. And, 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 and Austin, to your point, when I had read that, I believe, I, I, I think that election uh, yeah. in 2018 when it was, you know, legislature kind of. It was changed, yeah, when there was some trouble in 2018. Right, I, I, I get yeah. that. Um, to me, that's neither here nor there, quite frankly. Um, what I'm concerned about is Portage being the largest municipality in Porter County, you know, the gov you know, you, 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 I mean, your job, you, you, you put your picks in, it, you know, supposed to get vetted. And then all of a sudden the gentleman was seated. He was seated in there for what, 23 days, 24 days. And then he's yanked out. I mean, if, if, if that's not unprofessional, I, I, I mean, that, that's what stinks about this whole process. And like I said, I'm glad we're looking into the RDA. I'm glad we're doing our, our job with our board appointments because that's wrong. I mean, it's been, Portage needs to be represented. They're the lar largest city. And I, th I think that's wrong that they, it's been, they did. reached out to your, we got a Republican state rep and we got a Republican state Senator. So I'm, so I'm starting to, so my first step was to contact the RDA directly. You know, I talked with Sherry Ziller and yesterday we had a decently long conversation. I also talked with Mr. Hallenbeck, their attorney, Mr. Hallenbeck apologized because he said if they had gone to him first, 
he would have explained to them that the statute had changed in 2022. But that's why I think it's so disheartening for me, just speaking personally and on behalf of my city, is I was contacted. I did my own vetting of three candidates. Um, I mean, I could, depending on what you want to know, I, I can stand by all three candidates. I think a good one was picked. But to have nominated three candidates by the deadline and then to have had, you know, crickets from the state and from the RDA up until a point where I kept, you know, really emailing and checking in. Then they appoint somebody on August 23rd, and then yesterday it's yanked from him. Like I say, for me, I just felt very, I felt very, uh, quite frankly, the conversation I had with Sherry was, did I do something wrong? I'm not the most popular guy in Northwest Indiana in some circles. Um, is it something about me? She said, no, no, they just really wanted to put in somebody else, and they found the opportunity to find this change in law, and they removed your appointment and put in somebody else. I shouldn't say my appointment, my nominee who got appointed. And again, what I've expressed in terms of frustration, you talk about, you know, respect. For me, it's the angle of, first off, who doesn't do their homework on a law before you actually go and, you know, tell somebody to go ahead and do this, you know? Second part for me is the angle of, to I put it... Just, I, I don't mean to interrupt, Mayor, but... but I, and I don't mean to make a statement on that, but... It was a, it was a public hearing, and, and I don't... I think some people just walked out, but regardless, you know... I mean, obviously, we're nine minutes in, so you've got to afford every other person nine minutes. Oh, absolutely. And I came here at the invitation of Mr. Stone, so I apologize. I didn't realize I was coming during a public hearing part. So I'm happy to finish up. My concern, ultimately, I mean, on my own end, I'm just going to seek out what I can do, and I'm going to take it as a learning experience, a very hard one. I want to make sure that I bring into the county's attention the fact that there appear to be laws based on Porter County, or at least were intended to affect Porter County, and it was based on a population range the county is no longer in. I only am aware of two of them. One was, is now expired or replaced. One has to do with the election board, we think. I believe. We believe. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's, that is not I guess just to state, if there is some recurring language in state statute that where you see that number and it refers to Porter County, um, I just want to make sure you guys are aware because that in itself is interesting now that the county is over 170,000 people. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Mayor. No problem. Mayor, thank you. Okay, anybody else uh, for public comment? You get 11 minutes. <laughs> Finally, I get a long time. I am just going to quote a grievance to say we're not in trouble financially. No red lights are going off. Brickner, we're in a good spot. So, there's no need for public safety tax, correct? There's no need for real tax. Just wanted to throw it. Thank you. You're welcome, Don. Anybody else for public comment? Yeah, hello. Nice to see the council again. Um, I'm Susie Klepsky. I'm also with Don on this issue. I'm very, very much against any public safety tax. Uh, and there is, <laughs> I have my reasons for it, and I certainly reach out to each and every one of you to uh, let you know. Uh, I'm very, very with the Porter County Sheriff's Department. Uh, if you've ever tried to call the sheriff, um, it takes numerous, numerous, numerous efforts to actually get a hold of him. He's very good at evading phone calls and I don't think the people of Porter County deserve that uh, but it mo goes much much deeper than that I don't believe the Porter County Sheriff um, is someone who takes violence against women seriously again um, I have my reasons for this and um, I, you know I'm reaching out to all of you I pretty much live in fear in the county um, and there's a reason for it. The other person who does not take against women seriously is the prosecutor, Gary Gurman. Um, I think you should all review the budgets for both of those departments very in-depthly, very, very seriously. Again, uh, another reason why I live in fear in this county is because of the prosecutor, Gary Gurman. Um, and he'll be coming up for the budget and be guys asking some very tough questions. Uh, there's no reason. I actually am thinking about not only leaving this county, but leaving the state of Indiana because I live in so much fear. 
And again, I will be reaching out to all of you to let you know why. I'm tired of it. And, you know, the taxpayers pay uh, to be protected by the law enforcement officials. And you never think of law enforcement officials to turn around and betray you, stab you in the back, or put you in danger. But that does happen in this county. And I know that none of you, not one of you, would be ever, I think, people that, because I know most of you, would ever tolerate violence against women or in, in, in some way the uh, predation against women or you know, the fact that some public officials ignore that. And you are all in positions, in fact, to do something about it and to hold certain public officials feet to the fire. And I hope you do during the upcoming budget meetings. Um, you can ask tough questions and demand answers. And that's what I think you should do. So, um, again, I can't go in depth into all of this because I do fear for my life. Um, but just so you all know, there are some serious, serious issues going on in this county with the sheriff and the prosecutor. And, unfortunately, others, as many of you have already heard. So I won't go into depth into all of that, but... Um, you know, these upcoming budget meetings should really, you all should really, really take a very, very close look at the money the people in this county are spending and the lack of services being provided to them. So, did somebody cut me off? Oh, time, Susie. <laughs> Is it time? Is it time? It's 11 minutes. Right? All right. Must be time. Thank you. Thank you to the council for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, public comment? Once, twice, public comment is now closed, and um, we have come to the moment that we have all anticipated tonight. That's any other discussion? Or? Yeah, just a few things. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I just didn't want to go on I didn't know if other people were going to speak you know with the concern about the RDA you know I just wanted to it, it was you know during public hearing to keep it short so that then we're fair to everybody but um, yeah it sounds like it sounds like an issue um, that needs to be looked into you know about you know why the the city of Portage would be stripped of their appointment you know after after seating Correct. I mean, after seating him, then to strip them and, and appoint, you know, um, some. So, you know, I'm not sure the path. I, I mean, <coughs> I guess its relevancy is that, you know, we pay three point five million dollars off the top, uh, you know, of our of our lit that we collect. So, you know, and I, you know, I I believe. It. You know, regional collaboration. I, I do. I mean, it's you know the the whole South Shore that touches you know from Chicago to South Bend. Um, a lot of work there. You know, the first I think the first major project was in Portage, the um, the riverfront, the lakefront building there. But you know, I, I I don't know. I'm not sure. I could point to a whole lot um, else in Porter County or Portage, and, and I represent the city. The, the I represent the taxpayers, you know, of Portage Township, basically in the county, and you know, of that 3.5 million that we send, I don't know exactly how much, you know, it comes from Portage Township, but you know, for them to have their 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 voice basically removed, it, you know, and I think was it four years that it rotated back and forth, so you know, if the law changed, you know, why? why wasn't their appointment removed, you know, as the law changed. So, um, yeah, I think it's something we have to dig into. You know, I don't want to really get into a, you know, a huge battle. I shouldn't say that. I kind of like getting in battles once in a while. But um, it, it, it definitely needs to be addressed. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know, I 
taxation without representation. I mean, it's the largest city, largest township in this county. Um, there's a reason why the enabling legislation probably gave, you know, the largest and the second largest a, a seat on there and then to now take it away. I don't know for what purpose and I'm not aware of the 2022, you know, law if they amended it. But I, I think it's an issue if we want to figure out how the ways to work together. And I know um, there's a lot going on. We talked about it last meeting, I, you know, I believe with the TDDs, right, the Transportation Development District yep. and that overlap a huge um portion of both now you know and Portage, Portage is sitting in the perfect spot for some really good development i don't well, rather not i mean we know public meeting it always it, on a public okay yeah we, Yeah, if you want to reach out to me about it and read, it's, it's, yeah, that, that now will, so they've got an overlapping TIF district in the city of Portage that is, you know, whatever, X amount of acres, it, it's, it's probably, it's massive, and they remove, you know, Portage's voice from that, that board. You know. Well, let's just let's just call it for what it is. Nobody wants to say it, so I will, because I, you know, I've never cared whether I get reelected or not. But uh, bottom line is, this is a gentleman that was not picked by us, correct? He was replaced by our pick this time around. Who does he know? Nobody wants to say it, but I'll ask it. Who does he know? Why did he get picked? Why is the voice of the people not being heard at the state level? And you can quote that, ma'am. Well, what bothers me about it is the idea that you actually reached out and tried to, in a concerted way, to find out what was going on. You were, you had put three people out, to, you know, uh, to the governor or the RDA, and nothing happened, nothing happened, and you kept inquiring. Finally, when a decision was made, and you did uh, advise that, you know, this is who you were appointing, all of a sudden it was jerked. And that is what's very suspicious yeah. looking in my opinion. Not right. You know, and you guys, it, it, our, our, our authority is, it is the purse strings of this county. And that money does flow through us. I'm not suggesting anything at this moment, but, you know, it, it, there, there's ways to, for us to, to use our, our voices with, you know, with the public's tax dollars and, you know, sometimes it's, maybe it's not, <laughs> I don't know, you know, sometimes we do things and maybe we get corrected in our actions later, but, um, but sometimes they're needed to be done to make a statement also, uh, but. Well, they made a point. Yeah. So, you know, but I think going down the right path of trying to figure out first, you know, having conversations to figure out what the heck happened, but if, if we don't get the right answers to them, you know, um, we're going through budget sessions here, so maybe it's. It, it's the perfect time, you know, if we don't get the answers. So that's one thing I'll definitely, you know, uh, work with whoever to try to figure out. But the other thing is too, is, you know, um, there's another, a difficult question in front of us too, with, with, uh, you know, a possible judge in, in the court system that, you know, I've been shared some information too. Now, again, I, I don't, to me, this is, you know, we're funding things and, and we have to fund, you know, public safety, the whole justice system, you know, up and down. And, and it, it, to me, this is, you know, a, a platform maybe that, you know, if I'm going to continue to look down the path of, of, of what happened, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm just not comfortable with um, what I know so far. And, you know, my understanding is domestic violence is the second leading um, cause of arrest in this county when I talked to the sheriff last um, the pre previous sheriff um, uh, so it's you know if it, it's one of the top two reasons that you know that um, people are being arrested I mean it's a it's a serious issue and if if there is a you know a judge or, or somebody along that path that you know, can't properly do their job, then, you know, I mean, we do fund, we, we do fund things and, and or don't fund things. So, um, 
you know, I, I think there'll be an opportunity for, you know, us to approve or not approve, you know, funding for, you know, courts coming up. So I think as the information gets out there, people need to seriously consider that. Um, but to me, this is the time that it, you know, it may or may not be the right time, but I think it's the perfect time because that's what we do. We fund, we fund government and it, and we fund it with the taxpayer dollars. And if there's something that's, that's wrong and in our face, then we have to address it. And I'll, I'll leave you guys with this real, you know, for, if you guys don't know, or you do know my, um, my wife is a victim of domestic violence and the fact that her real father murdered her mother when she was two years old. So it's, she was there. Um, it, it's not something that you, you turn your head away from. So, and if, if we know about something and we turn around and don't do anything and we fund something, then, you know, something happens, it, you know, but I was elected to have a voice. I'm going to use this. So those are the two things I wanted to bring up. Anybody else got anything to share? Well, I'm, I'm going to have to switch the subject. For, I, uh, as you know, I'm having difficulty. I pride myself with being present at all meetings. That's what I was elected to be and I have, over the years, uh, made myself available to be at meetings. I have requested more than once that this budget meeting on September 27th be changed, if possible, because I am not going to be available that night. And uh, I started talking about this two weeks ago, and for some reason, uh, I know that we have made these adjustments for other council people in the past, and I, I'm concerned that uh, this isn't being addressed at all with me. It is, I'm being told it is what it is, period. And um, I just want to make it a point, if I'm not here on the 27th, I, um, I want people that I represent to know that I tried very hard to have that meeting date changed to no avail. Thank you. Yeah, I think Friday meetings are out of line. That's I've been here 14 years, Sylvia, 16 years. I've never had a meeting Friday on night. Friday nights. I mean, people have families. I don't know if a, a department head, elected official, an uh, employee has kids playing sports in high school. I know I have to make a decision because there's two Friday meetings and uh, and the one on the fourth is there's there's a wedding with a family so i just tell them go without me i have to go to a friday meeting at the county so it, it's it's it, it's just not I, I don't know why they were made on fridays i don't know you know and and i do believe they should be moved i agree 100 percent with sylvia you know it, i don't think you do the people's business on friday nights anybody else have any talking about issues with elected officials and things that they have done, there are probably people on the council that shouldn't be there for certain issues. And I would suggest that you start looking. I, yeah, thanks. I mean, it, the this council sets all dates and, you know, I did respond to that and I, I, I continue to respond to that, you know. I responded initially, and then I continue to respond that, you know, Friday dates are un inappropriate. Um, I, quite so. truthfully, I have asked, I have telephoned Red Stone, I emailed um, Mike Brickner, I talked with Mike Brickner, who is the president of the council. Um, we've never had a problem 
with setting dates, with changing dates. It's never been an issue. I did not realize that we were having a Friday night meeting. Most Friday nights I'm, I'm available. This particular Friday night, I am not available. And I was not aware that we were having a meeting on a Friday night. In 16 years that I have been on the council, we've never met on a Friday night. I'm just going to add, um, I know that the, the dates are set. And the only thing I would say is that during budget time, uh, that this council should, I mean, you know, going into my fourth budget, should make themselves available during budget time. And understand that this month is a busy month for all of us. And it's Friday night, you know, everybody's first choice, no. But no, but at the same time, I'm, you know, I'm just saying that the dates are set, they've been set. Um, and, you know, still so your email was, are we having a meeting on Friday night? I can show you the email. You didn't say anything, you couldn't make it, uh, that you couldn't be here. Tonight was the first time for the record that you said anything that you you had other plans. That was tonight. So don't I know what your email said. Uh, and I responded, uh, I've had discussions, the dates were set. It's our job and Friday night is a work week day and um, they're not being changed. And Can so we're either you know, if we have a quorum, so if you can't make it, I understand your legacy of 16 years, you never missed one, that's fine. But if we, as long as we have a quorum, we're gonna move forward. Well, I will change my- So we have other things to, we have other things to deal with other than everybody trying to, so trying to work everybody's plans out during budget, budget time. The month of September is budget time. And we set aside that time to do our job, whether it's a Monday or a Friday. So I, I appreciate your effort, but to, you know, the complaining, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna listen to complaining about having a meeting on Friday night anymore. The dates are set. If you can be here, that's great. If we have a quorum, then that's all we need. I but we're not gonna good. work around everybody's schedule. It cannot be done. And um, I know I set my month aside during budget time to be available. And you made a choice knowing that budget time is in September and you're not available. I don't want to hear any more complaining about it. So anybody else have anything? I think we all have a voice and we can use it when we want up here, Mike. So, I mean, I don't, I'm maybe here. next September, if you're president, I'll make sure I put out some kind of you're up here complaining. email to all of my family that says, hey, nobody have any kind of wedding or birthday in September, you know? Congratulations. So, you know what? You yeah, got to, it's like everybody keep everything clear in September. Brickner said that we got to set it aside. You know what? So it's it's our job. It's our job to be. Well, I mean, and four, four votes can change things too. So you know what? Uh, it'd be nice to have solutions instead of your problems. Yeah. You know, Friday, I'm tired of not when you do the. You sit up here and complain, <laughs> and um, it's it's unfortunate that you embarrass yourself. I embarrass myself. Take no. a motion to adjourn, please. We have a motion. Second. And a second adjourned. His leadership is outstanding. Oh, here's, here's. No, no.